This is a tutorial for the program WinX HD Video Converter Deluxe and I've downloaded this file for the Mac. They've got Mac and Windows versions and it is a file converter so any type of video file you can convert it to another format to play on different devices so if you have uh, mobile tablets or phones or you want to convert an MP4 uh, a few of them and burn them to DVD, you can convert them to, to Bob file. So it converts, or, you know, any type of video that you want. Before you can convert it, you need to have ripped it. Now it's extracted from the physical DVD and you can do that there. They do have a program, DVD Ripper Platinum, which I haven't used. You can use free rippers like um, Handbrake or the one I'm currently using at the moment on the Mac is called uh, Rip it, and it's currently ripping a disc at the moment, ripping a movie, extracting that off the DVD, which will leave me with an MP4 file. Uh, now I have some files here, uh, a Windows movie file that I want to convert to play on the iPad. Um, this one, which is one that I've produced, screencast video that I want to actually take the audio out of it and, and then convert that audio to text. And there's a couple of TV episodes here that I want to put onto a DVD, so I want to turn those into uh, VOB files. Uh, any type of video format you have, you can convert using this program. Right, so let's have a look at the interface. It's quite a simple program because it gives you a lot of presets where you don't have to worry about what are the actual settings for your video and your bits and your um, resolution, etc. You can just select the device you want to convert it to and select that device and that profile. Dragging the file into this window, I mean, there's the, the simple instructions, add the file, choose the output, what, how do you want to output that video, uh, where you want to put it, so where's the actual output directory, start, convert, quite clear. Uh, if I wanted to, to add a file, I can actually add them from here, so if I take that one and drag it in, then uh, I can see what the specs are for that particular video. It's at 640 times 360, so it's widescreen, 16.9, and it's codec, uh, and it's audio track, and it's bit rate, and I would like to play that on an iPad. So I'm going to select the Apple device. And there's all these tabs here. You can uh, convert files just as a general video here if you want to convert something back to a, a Windows movie file or convert something that goes in, onto YouTube. Um, any, any Apple device, so the iPads, pods, phones, to Apple TV, to an HD video. So you want it actually to um, create an HD MP4 file. Uh, to your phone, so there's various phones there, so there's not a great range there of all the different phones. There's, there's not terribly many there and I've found on the phone that as long as you, you've got an MP4 it'll play on on the phone, any phone. You've got Blackberry, Nokia, uh, General and then you can uh, you know, fiddle around here with all the different settings if you sort of understand them but it has got a very big range of devices so you have the your Sony PSP and PS3s then you uh, can convert a file to play on that device to the uh, Xboxes and the music player Zoom back to DVD so if you actually have a whole lot of, of episodes or a whole lot of YouTube videos and you want to burn them onto a DVD you need to create them and, and, and save them as VOB files so you're saving them to DVD and in this one this will just rip out the music track of any video so if you've got a, a YouTube video and you like the music but you don't want the video you can uh, uh, download the video in the YouTube um, interface here and then just save it and convert it, just take the music out of it. So in this case I've got a Windows Media file and I want to convert it to an Apple device. It's going to be played on an iPad. Then I have some profiles to select from. This is the profile it's given me and it's at 640 times 360. So I could pick that one. There's, there's different profiles depending on the different iPads you have, the minis and the uh, iPad 2 and then the uh, iPad 3, normal quality, good quality, excellent quality, like going up to your HD. Um, in order to play it on, a, on a, an iPad 3, 
So I'm actually going to pick this one and see how it looks. Uh, you've got some some other ch uh, things you can tweak here. So you could change the audio quality if you wanted to improve it, uh, the sample rate, the volume actually will take it up a bit because it's never quite loud enough. The music codec only gives me that one option. Uh, for video, I'm tending to use the H.264 codec on every video that I do. Every video that I use is for an, an Apple device, an iPad, a phone, or an Apple TV, and, and I want to use that H.264. The output format is going to the iPad, so some of these are all part of the, the actual um, preset, the profile. Uh, if, um, if you really wanted to do uh, high quality convert, then you can use the high quality engine, which as the message says, improves the image quality, but is uh, does make the conversion a little bit slower. Uh, keeping the aspect ratio, so you can either keep it as it is or stretch it, depending on your computer and how many cores you've got. This one is quite a fast computer. It does have, um, it's an i7, so it's got quite a few cores, which can all uh, be used at the same time to make the uh, conversion process fast if I decide to use all four core, all eight cores. But I'll leave it at that. Uh, and I tend to leave the name and I'll, I'll rename it once it's actually finished. The output folder, this is the default folder it's given me and I'm tending to leave that there so at least I know where it is. And then all you've got to do is start and make one more um, selection. Once that file is converted, do you want to add the um, program to add it to the iTunes library immediately after conversion? And um, I'm going to say no because I like to rename my files in a specific name format um, or shut down the computer when the conversion is completed. And it gives you information about how long it's going to take before that uh, conversion is finished. This one, 25 minutes, and it's taking quite a while because it's uh, – um, using the high quality engine. So we'll come back when that one's finished. So just pause there. Once the video has, has finished converting, it will open up into your documents folder where the output path is. So in this case, it's put it into an iPad folder. That's the actual file there, Surf and Turf Trailer. It's now an MP4. And there's a, a couple of other ones that I've done. It puts them into um, the iPad folder, so I've converted an MKV file, a Torchwood episode, into a 720EHD MP4 file. Uh, for the VOB folders, these were the, the two uh, TV episodes that I wanted to uh, convert to a VOB, and I would then use some disk burning software to burn those two to a DVD, so I could play it into a, in a DVD player, or Blu-ray player. Uh, for the MP3, I'm going to, to uh, extract some MP3 in, in, a, in a minute. And um, this is the file that's, that's still being ripped from um, my Rip It one. So until you have a ripped file, so this one's three minutes to go before it's converted, and then I can convert that to a different format. Now, once you've converted it, the, uh, you can remove it or clear it. And... Let's get a, a, another one. So I have another file that I want to, to rip the audio track from. This one here, I'm going to drag that in. And it's this file that I just want the audio from it. So I can send that one to music. I just want the audio. I want to make it a bit louder. And start. It's going into the MP3 folder. It all, all, always puts it into, if you're on a Mac, your user folder into the movies folder and then into uh, the mp3 so I can start that one and it's ripping out the uh, the audio track for me and in, if you didn't want it to open the output folder when the conversion was completed you can you can uh, deselect that so it's it's done there's the actual mp3 track now so if I can go back into the movies folder MP3. There's the uh, the original MP4. It's now been turned into an MP3. And then what I would would want to do is go back and in, in all these files and rename them. So I wouldn't be putting that one into iTunes like that. I would have to rename that. And I have my own naming conventions for doing that. I didn't want the program to do that for me. Then I can uh, clear that one away or remove it.
If I want to download a YouTube video or a Vimeo, or any of those online video sharing sites, then take the uh, the URL of the of the video. I can do it from from there, or on YouTube you can go to Share and take the link. So let's just copy that and then go back to the program into the YouTube, and it's actually put it there for me anyway. Or if it wasn't there. Uh, I can paste it in. So these are all the, the, the websites that it will download video from. So Daily Motion and Vimeo, YouTube, probably the, the three most important ones there. And then OK, so I've got my video in there. It's analysing the video for me to make sure that it's accurate. And uh, now I can decide how do I want to convert that video. So I want to play that uh, on an Apple device on the Apple TV HD and checking all the codecs, making the volume a bit bigger. Nothing else generally will change and then start to convert that one. So that's downloading the YouTube video and converting it to play on the HD Apple TV. So the YouTube video has been downloaded and converted and it's placed it into the Apple TV folder. Um, and all I would need to do is to rename that file and put it into iTunes. So every type of file that you convert, the program will give you a separate folder where those converted files are output to. And it makes it easier to find them a little bit later before you go and move them off to whatever media player you're using. Uh, not only does it do YouTube, but it will do any, we'll go back into YouTube here, it will do any of these online sites. So if I went into Vimeo and found a video there, let's just delete that one, go to go to a different site. There's the, video, the Vimeo one. There's a link there that will download that. For daily motion, find a video. And uh, there is nowhere to share it here. So I'm just going to get that link up there and see if that will download it and go back into converter to the YouTube it actually finds it for you so if you actually go onto the page uh, it will find it for you and that's going to start to analyze it and then I can convert that one and maybe save that one to again to an Apple device to a phone and I can pick the different profiles for the phone so is it going on to the iPhone 4 or the iPhone 5 Whichever phone you've got, you're going to pick the appropriate profile to convert it to and then start. So let's just remove that. Uh, up in the options, there's there's not a lot you, you need to change. So you could add files manually by, by clicking that and it will go into your uh, finder where you can pick the files that you want to add. The other way is drag them in from your finder or your uh, library. Uh, remove them from there clear them from there, um, register to, to actually purchase and um, make your copy registered. This one's just an evaluation copy that I've downloaded. Uh, options, you can um, change your target file name. So when the um, file is converted, it will put in, uh, as we've got here, a template It's going to do the name and then the clip ID. Now you can change what you want the default naming convention to be. Uh, I'd rather just do it myself, but you can pick something else. The audio language, so the, the, the default language that you want your audio in and your profiles, no different profiles there. Um, going up to the very latest, so even for the Microsoft Surface tablet. Um, so there's not much you really have to, to tweak in this. Check for new versions. Find the file, drag it in, decide what output you want, pick that output. Have a look at the settings in the middle just to see if you want to tweak them a bit. And generally, I'll make the, the, the volume louder and I always change it to H.264. Um, and then check the uh, original resolution. I mean, this Vimeo one that we're, we're looking at, the original resolution is 480 by 320. Uh, now, I can make it bigger. The file size will be bigger. It's not going to make that image any clearer because it can't put back pixels and, and bits that aren't there. So um, if you've got a small video, um, generally your quality won't get much better. Nonetheless, as, a, as far as converters go, it is 
a very simple converter to use and does an enormous range of outputs and something for, for every possible device here, very easy to use.